Contact Tutorials. My name is MD Men, your regular host. Today's tutorial is going to center around the data link layer. And now I'm going to explain in theory and practice concepts like broadcast domain, packets, CSMA CD, Ethernet, and most importantly, MAC addresses. Okay, so without wasting so much of your time, let's get right to it. All right, welcome back. I'll take you straight to my lab. Not exactly lab do just uh, Microsoft Paint, but it will do. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be explaining concept like uh, I have three area of focus here. I'm going to explain Ethernet frame MAC address as they relate to the data link layer or the layer two. Okay, moving on. Ethernet. What is Ethernet? I'm sure most of you have heard of the word Ethernet after all, we all use computer right yep okay so ethernet in the world of computer networking is a layer 2 protocol that runs at 10 megabits per second half duplex with something called csma cd yes csma cd carrier sense multiple access collision detection so i'll take it again ethernet is a layer 2 protocol they are runs at 10 megabits per second with something called half duplex, of course, with something called CSMA CD. By half duplex, I mean bidirectional communication is possible, but only one direction at a time. A good example of that is your walkie talkie. So you can't listen and speak at the same time. CSMA CD is a technology that has been embedded into the internet to avoid possible collision. And why do we need to avoid collision? Because in my definition of Ethernet, Ethernet runs at half duplex. If you have something running at half duplex, it means whenever you try to speak and listen at the same time, there's going to be, there's bound to be a collision. Okay, so let me explain CSMA CD. If I have a diagram like this, I have, you will excuse my drawing, I have a communication pathway with PC1, PC2, PC3. PC4, PC5, and PC6. Okay, so I have six computers on a network. You can see the background is a bus topology. This computer wants to communicate. Okay, so there's an event whereby PC1 wants to transmit to PC6, PC5 wants to transmit to PC2, PC3 wants to transmit to PC1, 4 to 6, and what have you. Because they are running Ethernet, which is the layer 2 protocol. Because they are running Ethernet, and because Ethernet is half duplex, they cannot all communicate at the same time. But now, here's the problem. Every computer on the network thinks they are the only one on the network. Or every computer on the network thinks everybody is sleeping, nobody is transmitting. So when PC1 wants to start transmitting to PC6, it's not going to ask anybody, hey, you guys, is anybody transmitting? Please stop transmitting. I need to use the channel to transmit. In essence, if PC1 needs to transmit to PC6, that means PC1 and PC6, they are going to hijack the entire pathway. Nobody else can talk just like the walkie-talkie analogy. So you are going to hijack the entire pathway, competition pathway. Nobody else is going to talk. Okay, so because it is half duplex and because PC1 doesn't know that when I want to send uh, a message to PC6, PC5 also wants to uh, send the message to PC, PC2 because these computers are not mind readers. So they can't read the intention and mind of the, next, uh, the computer sitting next to them on the same network. 
Hence, there's bound to be collision. So by the time PC1 starts transmitting, PC5 starts transmitting, 3 transmitting, 4 transmitting, 2 transmitting, there's always going to be or there's bound to be a collision. So how do we avoid this collision? That is the CSMA CD. CSMA CD stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detection. Okay, so the way it works is whenever there is a collision, the switch is going to send out a jamming signal. This jamming signal is going to instruct all computers on the network on that communication pathway to stop transmitting for a randomized amount of time. For instance, uh, PC1, stop transmitting for 10 milliseconds. PC2, stop transmitting for say 15 milliseconds. PC4, stop transmitting for 20 milliseconds. PC6, 60 milliseconds. PC5, 45 milliseconds. PC3, 35 milliseconds. By the time they resume transmission, the chances of collision again is slim to none. Okay, so CSMA CD carrier sense. I am listening on the wire. Multiple access. There are more than one computers on the network. You see, we have six computers already. And then collision detection. Carrier sense. I am listening. Multiple access. More than one computers on the channel. Collision detection. Okay, so that's it, Anet. Moving on, I'm going to explain my next concept, which is frame. So what is a frame? And what has it got to do with the data link layer? What has it got to do with layer two? What has it got to do with networking? Okay, so a frame in the data link layer is a protocol data unit or what is known as PDU. So a protocol data unit is a representation of data on every layer of the OSI layer from the physical layer. Data and physical layer uh, is, uh, exist in form of electrical signals. Of course, data in layer two, which is the data link layer, exists in a form called frame. Data in layer three is called a packet. Data in layer four is called a port. Data in layer five is called uh, data and so on and so forth. Now, a frame, what does this frame look like? A frame is data, the representation of data in layer two, like I mentioned. And I'm going to use a diagram to explain what a frame looks like. Okay, so a frame is just like an envelope. I need to send message to somebody. Okay, so from before we had uh, internet and telephone and everything, people go to the post office to send letters. If I need to post somebody in a distance place, I need to prepare the message. Before I take you to the post office, I'm going to label a receiver's address. I'm going to put a message inside and I'm going to seal it. When it gets to the post office, the post office people are going to now uh, insert your own envelope instead of inside of their own envelope and then with their own branding. By branding, I mean they are still going to put the destination address on it before they start transporting it okay so a frame is just like your envelope like i mentioned and using this diagram i hope i'll do justice with the concepts so i have with me here one Okay, so this is what the frame looks like. I'm going to explain, I'm going to uh, fill in the field of what the frame looks like uh, in just a bit. Here we are going to have destination. source data uh, f c s c r c all right <coughs> so a typical frame, like just like your envelope, 
is going to contain the first header. By the way, I separated them into four headers. The first header, that's the the the, uh, the outside, the thing you see first, the, the portion or the part you see first. The first header contains the destination MAC address. It makes sense, right? Because as soon as I receive a letter from the postman, the first thing I look at is the destination. Who is it mailed to? If I see it is mailed to my house, then I know that it belongs to me. If I see the destination uh, uh, and I realize that it's not my address, then I immediately know that it is not addressed to me. So there's no point of looking at the source, the sender, that's the sender, and uh, even going ahead to opening the uh, letter and then reading the message. Okay, so the first portion or the first header is contains the destination MAC address. In a moment, I'm going to explain MAC address and then it will all make sense. Think of MAC address as a physical address, your home address. Okay, so in the first portion of the frame or the first header or the header portion of the frame, we are going to have our destination MAC address. By the MAC address, MAC is short for Media Access Control address a way of uh, a way of recognizing computers on a network yeah destination mac address and then next to it the source mac address so if i check the destination mac address or if i check the destination address on a letter and i see that yes it is addressed to me the next thing i want to see is who is the sender who sent me this message so the next thing we are going to have is source mac address Next to our source MAC address, we are going to have the actual data, which is the actual message in the third portion. And then finally, we have FCS. FCS is short for frame check sequence. And inside the FCS, it houses what is called the CRC or cyclic redundancy check. Now, what is FCS? What is CRC? In data communication, when a message is sent, there is what we call integrity okay so because you are sending it over a network and you don't know uh, whether the data uh, got corrupt in transit and you need to be sure that the original data that left the source is the original data that got to the destination there is what you call a fringe sequence it's a form of algorithm that the a hashing algorithm that uh, the network is going to generate so from the source from the source now, before PC1 start transmitting or before PC1 sends, before any computer sends out a frame, they are going to perform a mathematical calculation and then they are going to come up with a number. They are going to perform, a, a, of course, a mathematical calculation and they are going to come up with a number. Let's say they use a formula and then they come up with a number 007. Now, they are going to store that 007 inside the CRC. When it gets to the destination, once the recipient confirms that, yes, this is my this, this is my address, the message is meant for me, and then they open it again and then they check the source. Okay, I'm getting it from Mr. A. And then they see the data. But now they don't know. What if this data along the way, somebody intercepted this data and then modified it and then sent it forward? How do I know that this data is genuine? How do I know that the integrity of the data being sent to me has not been violated or interrupted? How do I know that this data was not corrupted in transit? Okay, so the recipient or the receiving device is going to perform the same hash function. It's going to perform the same mathematical calculation and come up with its own number now that's a cyclic redundancy check it's going to calculate the same mathematical function and come up with its own number then it is going to match its number to what uh, the source the sender stores inside of the fcs if the numbers match then the receiver will now be convinced that okay this data is original and genuine it was not corrupt in transit it was not intercepted in transit however if the numbers don't match then it's going to drop it or it's going to know that well somebody along the line uh, 
uh, intercepted this data and modified it. So this is not the original data I'm getting from the sender. Okay, so think of it as uh, supplying your username and password on your website or a portal or a platform. If you supply the wrong password, it won't work. Surprise! If you supply the right password, you you are granted access. If you supply the wrong password multiple times, they log you out, and then you have to use the reset uh, password uh, option. Okay. So first, we have the destination MAC address, the source MAC address, the data, and then the frame check sequence, which houses the cyclic redundancy check. All right. That is that for frame. Okay. So this is what the frame looks like. By the time all these things are put in place, then a certain computer on the network, say PC1 or PC2 or PC3 or PC4 or 5, can transmit on the local data link. Next on, I'm going to explain MAC address. Okay. So in computer networking, there are two ways of identifying computers on the network. The first we call uh, a physical, uh, we have two ways of uh, identif identifying computers on the network. We have physical addressing and logical addressing. Before now, you must have heard of IP addresses. So an IP address is a logical address given to computers on the network, which is which can be dynamic. Dynamic in the sense that it's subject to change. However, a MAC address is a physical address given to a computer. So every computer on a network must have a MAC address. That is how they communicate. That is how they are being recognized. So the MAC address is uh, a physical address that is bound into the network interface card of any computer or communication device before it can be recognized or before it can participate in a network every device whether it's a printer a digital camera a, a, a scanner any device that can connect to a network must have a mac address okay so the mac address is 48 bits in length The MAC address is 14 bits in length and it is written in four octets. I have something like this. Let me bring out an example so that it will help me to explain the card. 002A dot or let me use let me use dot to separate it. A B C D dot one two three four. Okay, so a MAC address is 48 bits in length and also hexadecimal. By hexadecimal, I mean it makes use of letters and numbers. That's hexadecimal being the 16. So a MAC address is 48 bits in length and hexadecimal in nature. So this is a typical MAC address of a computer or a communication device. Now, a computer cannot understand this. If you supply this to a computer, it is meaningless. And why is that? Because computers only understand binary. Computers understand data when they are being interpreted into binary. Computers only understand zeros and ones. So you bring in hexadecimal here, you are just wasting your time. It won't make sense. Okay, so remember I said MAC address is 48 bits in length. So each one of these characters is 4 bits. That's right. Each one of these characters is 4 bits. So before a computer can recognize this MAC address, before a computer can interpret this MAC address, it has to be converted into binary. Because if it is not zeros and ones, then computer cannot process it. It has to be in binary for the computer to be able to process it. Okay, so I have with me here the first one, which is zero. The conversion is something like this one, two, three, four. So here I have one. 
two, four, eight. It can go as far as 16, 32, 64, and 128. But I don't need to go far because, like I said, each one character here is four bits. Now, 002A combined is 16 bits. ABCD 16 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 16 bits. Altogether, it gives you 48 bits. Okay, so here, on the first octet, should I say octet? No, it's not up, an octet. On the first character here, I have one, two, four, eight, and everything, every bit is turned off. That's why you have zero. Okay, so the binary equivalent of zero here is let me keep it here. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. So next, I have this, which is the same thing. Zero, 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 zero. Now, I have two. Next one, I have two. So I'm going to do another one like this. I have one, two, four, eight. Okay, so zero, this bit is turned on, zero, zero. So what I have here is zero, zero, one, zero. I remember my period. Okay, so moving on, I have another A, which is the same thing, zero, zero, one, zero. Then I have No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Zero, zero, one, zero is for two. Then next to two, I have A. Now, uh, counting hexadecimal, when you get to nine, from 10 to 16 is represented in letters as A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so A is 10. And if I need to get 10 from, from my table here, I have one, two four eight okay so what bits are turned on what bits do i need to turn on to give me 10 i'm going to turn this on turn this off turn this on turn this off so eight plus two gives me 10 then i come here i write uh, zero sorry one zero one zero moving on the next is a so a the same thing i get dot one zero one zero next what do i have i have c and what is c c is 12. how do i get 12 here and you come here again one, two, three, four. so i have one two it's how do I get to it? I turn this on, I turn this on, turn this off, turn this off. So I have one, one, zero, zero dot, which is next. D, what is D? A, B, C, D. D is 13. How do I get 13? I'm going to have something like this. One, two, four, eight. One, two, four, eight. All right. So in order for me to get 13, I turn this on, turn this on, turn this on. Gives me 13. One, one, zero, one okay next i have one again all i need to do is come down here one two three four one two four eight one two four eight this is off this is off this is off this is on 
And what do I have? Dot zero, 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 one. Zero, 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 one, right? Makes sense. So next one, I have two, two. Like I got from here is, I think, zero dot dot zero zero one one zero then i have three three how do i get three simple one two three four one two four eight this is zero zero one one dot zero zero one one how do i get four well that's easy one two four eight okay one two four eight this is turned off this is turned on this is turned off this is turned on so zero one zero zero okay so that's the binary equivalent of this mac address if i can write it clearly here i'm going to have zero 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 dot zero 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 dot zero zero one zero dot one zero one zero dot one one zero zero let me expand this a little bit one one zero zero dot one one zero one dot zero 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 one dot zero one zero one zero dot dot zero zero one one dot zero one zero zero all right Okay, so this is the binary equivalent of this MAC address. Okay, so if you put it in this format, then the computer will understand because it has been converted to binary. So whenever you see a MAC address or whenever you have been given a MAC address, how to go about converting it to binary is everything I've just finished uh, explaining. I hope it makes sense. Okay, um, a little tidbit about MAC address for the explanation of MAC address, the, the first 24 bits of a MAC address is considered the OUI field. By OUI, I mean, uh, let me see if I can type OUI, organizationally unique identifier. Okay, so where will i get my first 24 bits remember i said each character here is four bits so four bits here eight bits 12 bits 16 bits 20 bits 24 bits okay so i get my 24 somewhere around here let me mark it no, no, no. somewhere around here okay so this portion is called the OUI field or organizationally unique identifier. So what does this mean? There are different companies out there that manufacture networking devices, computers and hardware. One of these companies, probably the most popular one is Cisco. Okay, so Cisco has their own OUI or organizationally unique identifier. There is a convention adopted by Cisco that if you are an expert computer network engineer, by mere looking at it, you know that, wow, this is a Cisco device. And then we have other players like uh, Linksys, we have D-Link, we have, uh, uh, there are lots of them, but I know of uh, Cisco, which are probably the most popular. I know of Cisco, I know of D-Link, I know of Linksys. You see their networking device, their switches, their routers. They have a convention, which by me looking at it, you can say, okay, this router or this switch is from Cisco. This router, this switch is from Linksys. This router, this switch is from D-Link or what have you. 
So the first 24 bits of the MAC address is considered the OUI or organizationally unique identifier. Now, secondly, the seventh most significant bit counting from my right hand side is considered the universal local bit or the UL. So where can I find or how can I get my uh, universal local bit? The first character here is four bits and then before I get to it, I'm going to count on the second zero, I'm going to count five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the seventh most significant bit I'm counting from my right hand side is under the second character, which is a zero. Okay, so it is called the universal local bit or UL in short, universal local bit or UL. Now, whenever by or in theory, whenever this bit is turned off, what it means is that that MAC address is universally unique. Of course, I said in theory because I it is very rare, but I have seen instances whereby the uh, universal local bit is turned on. Actually, I see one there any other number it's turned on and why is that so because there are people out there that use uh, vpn services to mask their location and uh, uh, what have you so i i believe i've seen but chances are rare so in theory whenever the seventh most significant bit or the universal local bit the ul bit is turned off it means that mac address is universally unique that means in the whole wide world there is no any other computer or device available on the open internet or not just the open internet in the whole wide world there is no computer that has uh, that has that mac address as, apart from your own computer so it is unique and unique to only your computer so that is uh i think that is that on internet uh, sorry uh, mac address so i'm going to stop here for today's in a future tutorial i'm going to cover another aspect of um, data link layer that i failed to mention today because it is a huge topic in and of itself and what is that the vlan okay so the vlan or virtual local area network it's uh, something huge on its own. In a future tutorial, I'm going to do justice to that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for viewing. And uh, I will take a bow right now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. This is where I got the buttons on today's tutorial. I hope this has been informative for you. You guys know what to do, right? Please subscribe to my channel, Mantel Tutorial. Give us a like, leave us a comment, and very, 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 very important, please don't leave without turning on notifications. So until I come your way again next time, stay good, stay safe, peace.